Our Gospel reading tonight is in the 21st chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning at the 23rd verse. It is found on page 24 of the New Testament section of the Red Pew Bibles. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 23. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? The Pharisees argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe in John? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And the son answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? The Pharisees said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. So there's an owner of a small manufacturing company who was asked by one of her employees to write a letter of recommendation for them. The owner wanted to be honest in her letter that she wrote, but also wanted the employee to find a new job because of his poor work ethic. She was a little reluctant to write the letter at first, if she was honest with herself, but she eventually agreed to do so. And in that letter of recommendation that she finally wrote, this is how she concluded it. If you get John to work for you, you will be extremely fortunate, yours truly. Today's gospel reading is the second week in a series of three weeks that we are finding ourselves in the vineyard. I don't know about you, but my only real experience with a vineyard of any magnitude or kind was a short vacation in Napa Valley, California several years ago. And in my experience and time in the vineyards of Napa Valley, it had little to do with work or hard labor in any way, shape, or form. And one of the reasons why what I hear from folks who don't read the Bible or study Scripture as part of their faith journey is that they get stuck trying to relate to the story. Today might be one example of that, where we are trying to relate to the story by relating it to our our literal experiences in vineyards, of working in vineyards, even though we don't have any of those to compare to. So I'm hoping today that we can move beyond that thinking a little bit. In a really wonderful little book by author Anne Lamott, it's called Stitches. And in that book, Lamott wrote, if there is a God, and most days I do think there is, he or she does not need us to bring hope and new life back into our lives, but keeps letting us help. Here's the thing about God's work, folks. God really doesn't need us in order for God to do the things that God wants to be able to do and wants to do in the world. I believe God can do it with or without our help. But God, for some strange reason, reasons that I don't think that we're ever going to fully understand or comprehend in this life, for some strange reason, God keeps insisting that we, in fact, do get to help him in God's good work to bless and serve the world. 
Another story, quickly. A man applied for a job as a handyman. The prospective employer was excited about this candidate and asked him, do you do any carpentry? To which the prospective employee responded, no, I don't know anything about carpentry. How how about bricklaying or cutting tiles and pasting tiles, taking care of tile work? Again, the man answered, no, I, I don't know anything about that either. Well, how about electrical work, the prospective employer asked. No, I, I, I had never touched a light bulb before in my life. I don't know anything about that. Well, finally, the, the frustrated employer in the interview said, well, then tell me, what exactly is handy about you, since that's what I'm doing is hiring a handyman? To which the man got a big beaming smile on his face and great excitement in his voice, and he said, well, sir, I just live right around the corner. Sometimes the greatest thing that we can do to help God in God's work to bless and serve the world is to live just right around the corner, to be available to the work that God is calling us to do. So I want to ask one simple question for all of us who are gathered here tonight in worship. And I ask you this question as I ask you this question. I invite you to be open I invite you to be open enough to allow this question to rest on your heart, quite possibly to allow this question to rest on your heart in ways that you have never before let something do in your life of faith. I think it's the same question that Jesus is posing for us today, okay? Are you ready? Okay, here's the question. Are you available I believe that that is the question Jesus is asking the chief priests and the elders of the people in today's gospel reading. I believe that is the question Jesus is asking the money changers in the temple as he overturns their tables just the day before, a day earlier, or about a dozen verses of Scripture in Bible time. I believe that is the question Jesus is trying to illustrate in this parable about a father and his two sons. And most importantly, I believe that is the question Jesus is asking you and me today. Are you available? Are you? Are you available? Douglas Haar, in a commentary on Matthew's gospel and specifically today's gospel reading, reminds us of our tendency to behave like the chief priests and elders. As religious leaders, Har writes, they claim to be faithfully obedient to God, but they are blind to the fact that authentic obedience includes responding in faith to the new things God is doing. That authentic obedience includes responding in faith to the new things God is doing. The point Har is trying to make is not only important to religious leaders in Jesus' day or religious leaders in 2017. His point is for every human being who has ever claimed or ever will claim to be a follower of Jesus. And that point for followers of Jesus is that responding with authentic obedience in faith to the new things God is doing is not something reserved for super holy pastors or priests or bishops or professional church people. Responding with authentic obedience in faith to the new things God is doing is something that all children of God are invited to participate in each and every day. Are you available? Are you available to the new things God is doing? Are you available to the new people and places and situations that God is sending you into each day? Are you available to the new opportunities to share the love of the Savior of the world with others in unlimited ways? Are you stuck in the past? Please, 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 please hear me when I say this today. No matter what you have done, no matter what you think you have failed to do, God is doing new things in and through you. The future is wide open. Whatever hurt you've experienced, 
whatever thing you have done that you think has caused God to forget that you even exist is just this. It is in the past. Because of what God has done for us and continues to do for us through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, we do not have to let the past determine and control our future. By the grace of God, that is most certainly true. But in order for you and me to realize this, to finally realize that our past does not hold us back in our future, we need to be available to the new things God is doing. Theologian Brenning Manning says that Christianity used to be risky business. It no longer is, he proclaims. I think statements like that are true because we are no longer available to the new things God is doing. Instead, we make ourselves available to working too much and forgetting about our family and friends. We make ourselves available to try to satisfy our loneliness with more and more material possessions. We make ourselves available by making as much money as we possibly can because we think we have some strange belief that the, uh, the God, the almighty money God, will make us happy again. We make ourselves available by giving up our very lives to the addiction pressures of sex or alcohol or drugs. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world for us today and in all days, is found within the opportunity we have to be available, available for the work that God has for us to do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, are you available? I promise you, being available will involve risk on your part. And I also promise you, that being available and in being available, you will be blessed. And you will be a blessing to others in ways that you can't begin to imagine today. Make time every second of your day with every breath that you take to be available to the new things that God is doing. Amen.